In today's lab, we are going to be doing titration curves. We're actually going to be learning how to draw them. Remember from last class that a titration curve is merely the pH of your solution against the volume of your titrant that you have added, your titrant being what you are adding to the solution. By getting a titration curve, we can identify what our solution is and how strongly acidic or basic or how strongly buffered it is. In order to avoid taking 500 billion measurements on our pH probe, we're going to use futuristic technologies. This is an iPad. We're going to be using the graphical application on the iPad to record our data points. From the last lab, you should know how to set up your LabQuest 2. But if you're still not sure, click here to rewatch last week's video. So remember, we're going to have to interface the iPad with the LabQuest. In order to do that, we have to find out what the LabQuest's IP address is. Go ahead and click the Home button, and on some of these newer LabQuests, you can click Connections, and your IP address will be listed down here on the bottom. Go ahead into the iPad, click Built-in Sensors, and go down to Specify Source. Now you can enter the IP address of your LabQuest. So the devices have now been linked. Okay, so once your LabView is con or your LabQuest is connected to your iPad, you can go ahead and click up here to change it from a time-based trial to events with entry, just like in the first lab. Now that we have this events with entry, we can hit the play button and whenever you want to record an entry, just click keep. I would name the event as the volume of titrant that has been added in milliliters. So for example, if I've added so far four milliliters, I would call this event number four. We're going to start by getting 60 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, which we're going to use to rinse out our burette because this is going to be our titrant. So to rinse out the burette, we're just going to take a little bit of this and kind of try to get it on the walls of the burette and then go ahead and swirl the burette a little bit on its side as we pour it out. Make sure you run some out of the bottom and then pour the rest out by rotating the burette and pouring it slowly out. Done. We'll use a funnel to get our 60 milliliters inside. You'll want to try to fill it up to the zero milliliter mark. If you go under, you can always subtract from the final volume. For example, if you started at the 1.5 milliliter mark and went to the 15.5 milliliter mark, we just have to do 15.5 milliliters minus 1.5 milliliters equals 14 milliliters of titrant added. If you go over, you can always pour a little bit of the excess out. Remember, when measuring, look at the bottom of the meniscus. We're going to have 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and 50 milliliters of water in a beaker. At this point, we're going to add the phenothaline indicator. Just two or three drops should suffice. Now we're going to need a magnetic stirrer. This is a magnetic stirrer and this is a stir bar. We will place the stir bar inside our beaker and then when we turn it on, it will begin to spin. Try to make sure it's not hitting the glass or any of your pH probe indicators. You can use a clamp to make sure that your pH probe is safely out of harm's way or you can position it in such a way that it is safe. Once your pH probe is in position and well out of harm's way, we can begin our titration. Okay, so remember, we're going to press keep and tell it that we've added zero milliliters to begin with. Now we're going to go ahead and add two milliliters. Notice our pH right now is at about one. As we add some base, 
So you'll notice that our pH does not change even after adding a fair amount of sodium hydroxide. The reason for this is because we are in the buffer region for hydrochloric acid. As we add more and more, we will approach getting out of the buffer region, and you'll notice the pH start to change a lot faster. Make sure to press keep every couple of milliliters until finally your solution will turn a very light pink color. You have not reached your equivalence point yet, so continue adding about a drop at a time a little bit more of your titrant. This is an example of a titration curve that will look similarly to the very first titration that you conducted in lab with sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. So notice how you have this buffer region and then you have a very sharp endpoint. Your next titration will be broader because it will be with a weak base. But the most important region on a titration curve is without a doubt the endpoint. The endpoint is different than the equivalence point in that the endpoint is the visual representation. So right when you see that pink, that is your endpoint which is different than the equivalence point because the equivalence point is a theoretical point that we will never be able to truly know because the closest we can get is when an indicator reacts and changes color. So we account for this discrepancy by subtracting the endpoint from our equivalence point and we get our titration error. So we know how good our titration was. So, my buddy, Oxygen, went on a date with my friend, Potassium. The date went okay.